this video goes out to women who have children by men they can't stand. Women who have baby daddies. That's what y'all call them in the hood. <laughs> if you have a baby father that you don't like, you should have thought about that before you let him fuck you and impregnate you with his child. If you don't like the baby father, you're going to have to live with the fact that he is going to be a very pivotal part of your life for a long time until the child is of age and can communicate and deal with him on his or her own. But until the child gets old enough to be able to communicate with the father on their own, you are going to have to co-parent. This this thing that you had for the baby father could have developed, you know, uh, obviously after the breakup or years into the relationship. Maybe it wasn't uh, something that developed early on. Maybe you saw some qualities in him that you didn't realize was present early on. Or maybe he did something to hurt you and now you just, you're so angry at him and you have so much rage in your heart towards him. And what women like to do is they like to use, this is the proverbial uh, angry baby mama that keeps the child away from the father and use the child as a pawn and tool to hurt the father. You using that child as a stick to whoop the father's ass. But realize that the father gets hurt because you whooping his ass with that stick. But the stick get damaged too. You breaking the stick too. The stick metaphoric for the child. The child is a stick that you're using to whoop his ass. But you're not only hurting him, but you're hurting that stick too. It's very pivotal and important for a father to be in the child's life. And for you to selfishly make it about you and not about the child, the child is going to grow up hating you because you're being selfish and you're making it about you. You too busy <laughs> focusing on the fact that he hurt me. I don't like him. He broke my heart. He cheated on me. He did me. It's all about you ain't mentioned the child yet. Mm -hmm. What about how you are hurting the child? Mm -hmm. You are depriving the child from an opportunity to experience what it's like to have a father in its motherfucking life. Mm. This is what the fuck you are doing. You want to talk about how he's a bad guy, but well, you're a bad guy in the motherfucking situation too. Because you are making it about you and it really should be about that motherfucking child and his needs. And that child needs is not being met because you're making it about you and your motherfucking fucked up emotions. It ain't about you and your emotions. It's about the welfare of the child. Stop being selfish, thinking about yourself, and put the child in his needs first. Y'all seem to think that child support is enough. It ain't. Those one-on-one -on -one conversations are really important. Having a father in your life is really essential. It's imperative. And you should not get to dictate whether or not, whether or not the child gets to spend time with his father. I noticed that y'all love to have it y'all way. Y'all want everything y'all way. Y'all say that the father, y'all always say, well, you played a part in this. I didn't make the child by my fucking self. You fucked me. So you're just as 
responsible for taking care of the child as I am. Then why doesn't that work when it comes to the guardianship of the child? Determining who the child gets to be with. Don't he have some say in that too? Like you only want to hold the father accountable when it comes to him financially providing for the child. That's when it becomes a partnership. Yeah. When it comes to taking care of the child. But it's not a partnership when it comes to, you know, uh, decisions that are made for the child. Yeah. Such as, you know, time that he the child gets to have with their father. Don't he have, oh, he don't have no say so in that. You know, you get to dictate where the child go, who house he can, he or she can go over, and, and, you know, when he can see the father and when he can't see the father. Or she, he, she. There's only a partnership when it comes to taking money out your pocket and financially providing for the child and their needs. That's when it's about the motherfucking father. But any other time, it's all me. I get to decide. No, you don't get to decide everything. It takes two to create a child. So fucking selfish. Making it about you. And your child is going to grow up to hate you because of that. Mm -hmm. Because you deprived him the opportunity to, to, to develop a relationship with his father. Because you were selfishly making it about you. Thinking about the fact that the father hurt you. He hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. He cheated on you. Half of the time, you are, half of the time, some of y'all wouldn't be already knowing that these men are not father-like material, mm -hmm. and you knew that he wasn't capable of being faithful. You knew that from the jump. Your sister told you he was a motherfucking dog. You knew he was a dog because he was sleeping with Tawana and Teresa, mm -hmm. and Jasmine and Lisa. Mm -hmm. So you already knew he was a motherfucking dog. Why are you acting like it's something new? It's not just your child. Stop being selfish. Learn to think about the child and the child needs and stop making it about you. Because at the end of the day, you think that you're hurting him because he don't get to see his child, but you're hurting your child in the process. Both of them are taking the loss. It's like, oh, you father enough, you father enough to provide for my child, but you're not father enough to see my child. So is he a father or not? Because if you feel like, you know what I mean, he's a father and he should take care of his child, then why can't he see his child? Why is he only the father when it comes to providing for the child, but he's not the father when it comes to making certain decisions for the child? You only get to make all the decisions for the child. And then they get mad at the child when the child grows old enough, when, you know, teenage, teenagers, you know, teenagers when they start to develop their own mind and sense of themselves. Right. And they get mad at them when they start to become defiant and not listening to a word they they say or showing them that respect that every parent should get from their um, children. But right. you know, you only get back what you put out. Yeah. What, what more do you expect? You women have to be better when it comes to this. It's not about you. Understand that he hurt you and a lot of times a lot of women they think because the man was a bad boyfriend or a bad husband that that means that he's going to be a bad father. It's two different responsibilities, two different jobs that entails two different uh, uh, things and requires different skill sets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of men that are actually very affectionate and, and great fathers and, and great providers. May not be good in relationships per se, but that don't necessarily mean that they're not good fathers. And your child deserves the opportunity to have its father in its life. It's really imperative that a child has a father in its life. And you can't play that, you know, this is a team thing when it's convenient for you. Well, I, I'm not the only one responsible for taking care of this child. You help provide him. Okay, and yeah. So when I want him, I should be able to ask you for, your, for the child, and you should give him or her to me because I am the father. I play the part in producing the child. And the last thing that I want to say about this topic, and I'm going to bring it to a close, 
It's just that I personally don't agree with how the courts go about um, extracting money from the fathers. They base it off of how much the father makes when I think it should be based on how much the child needs. Because if a father makes $100,000 a year, the mother receives more child support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the father, you know when the father's actually in the home, he do not pay that much for a child. It is not, you know, a, a paying and providing for a child do not require $2,000 in a month. What does a child need in a month that, that costs $2,000? It shouldn't be based on that. It should be based on, I would probably say, the child's quality of life, where the child is from. Mm -hmm. If the child is from uh, the suburbs, then you, the father need to pay the amount of money required to sustain that kind of living. Yeah. If a child is being raised up in the hood, they don't need $2,000. They don't take $2,000 because he damn sure wouldn't be put, putting out that amount of m money if he lived with you. $2,000 a month. I just don't think raising a child required that amount of money. And a lot of you women, this is the last thing I'm going to say. Y'all bitch about the father not paying child support. But when you receive the child support, you're spending all of the money on yourself. Y'all not even spending it on a motherfucking child. You walking around looking like Beyonce and your child looking like they ran from a motherfucking orphanage. <laughs> Mm, yeah. With holes in their goddamn shirt. Their whole their shirts looking like motherfucking Swiss cheese. That makes no motherfucking sense. Your child looking like a goddamn homicide victim. With bullet holes all in his goddamn shirt. Mm -hmm. we got to do Dingy better. ass jeans. We got to do better. Got to do better. Again, yeah. making it about you. Oh, he. Uh, <laughs> I'm entitled to this. He owed me after all the years of stress he put me through. That's a choice you decided to make. You decided to stay with the motherfucking abuser. You decided to stay with the motherfucking drug user. You decided to stay with his cheating ass knowing he was a motherfucking cheater. You decided to stay with the motherfucking convict. That was your choice because you like that thug dick. Now because he don't want to fuck with you anymore, you acting like this is news. Like you don't, you ain't know this was the case from the beginning. Stop making it about yourself. Make sure you provide for those children and make sure you put that money to use. Put that money in a savings. Invest in your children's future so they can go to college in the future. That's what the child support is for, the children, not you. Mm -hmm. Getting your nails done and looking all foxy like you a goddamn celebrity. Getting your hair done every three, four days. Spending all the motherfucking child support money on Indian hair. Mm -hmm. Let's not do that. Indian Remy. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever kind of hair they, they motherfucking spend mm -hmm. it on. It's about the child. Not you trying to make sure you looking all nice and foxy and sexy and pretty. It's about the child. So make sure you put the child first. And not put yourself first. Because it's not about your needs. It's about the it's needs about the of the child. Invest in your child future. Save. Put the money in the bank. That's one thing. A lot of black parents say that they want their child to grow up with the best things. And want their child to have everything that they didn't have. Yeah. But y'all don't make it financially possible for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Because you're busy spending all the money, well, all the child support money. Morality in your home, you know, monitor who your children be around, monitor. What and a lot of women don't think just because you getting some child support money, and because the child is living with you, that you're doing any better of a job raising the child than the father that left the child. Because raising a child takes more than just providing for it financially. Mm -hmm. Talking to your child, communicating with them, instilling certain values in them. Reminding them that they're beautiful. Reminding them that they're loved. Those are the things that matter. Not just, you know, you getting a government check and you provide for the child. That don't mean that you're a good mother. 
It, it really ain't that hard. As a woman, it's really not that hard to stand by your children. Mm -hmm. The house is Section 8. That's provided for you. Stamps. You, you get stamps from the government. Mm -hmm. That's the food part is covered. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting money from the father. He provided for the clothes. You ain't really doing much. Mm -hmm. But sitting home on your motherfucking fat ass. Talking to your friends. That's all. Looking at Jerry motherfucking Springer and Maury. That's all you doing. Mm -hmm. That don't take no effort. And I can tell that y'all not doing a good job of stealing certain morals and values into the child because the children are walking around disrespectful. They out of control in this generation. That comes from the home and the terrible parenting skills that is coming from the mother. So it's partly the father's fault for not being in there while the kids are loose cannons, but it's also partly your fault for not raising that child right and instilling certain values and morals into them. Mm -hmm. But simply because, oh, I'm here in the child life. He lived with me. I'm providing him with food, heat, electric, and, and, and a place to sleep. That don't mean that you're a good parent. Because all of the child's needs are being provided by the government. Even the house. The Section 8 house with the low rent. You're only paying $100 rent. And working a part-time job at McDonald's or Family Dollar. But you got your child up in a, a, a violent, dangerous environment. And that's going to affect his psyche in, or her psyche in a negative way. Affect them mentally. Mm -hmm. The things that you're exposing your child to, allowing them to see. I even know some young parents are bringing a whole bunch of different men in and out the house. Mm -hmm. Not doing a background check on these motherfucking men that you bring in to the house with your child. Mm -hmm. Might be molesting your motherfucking child and you don't know because you ain't do a background check. Mm -hmm. Guys, a nigga watching y'all kids. And All you concerned about mm. is you getting some motherfucking dick because you want some motherfucking affection. Mm. Do a damn background check. That's another reason why these kids growing up all fucked up. Because of the stupid, irresponsible decisions oh, of the mother. Mm. Be smart. This is J Love, 47. And this is Anthony B. Peace. Peace, YouTube. Peace.